In this video I'm just going to cover off a bit of a season wrap and some of the learnings that I had chasing Flathead uh, from the 2023 to 2024 season. So I really started targeting Flathead around uh, first week of September. So start of spring I'm out there. The water's still quite cold uh, when you first go out and you can catch the flathead all year round as well. They're just a lot harder to target or it's just not really that comfortable wading through cold water as well. For myself, uh, earlier on in this season, I usually probably get a few less fish than I would uh, around that sort of December, January period where it's the most hot. However, you, the size of the fish are usually a little bit better. You're probably averaging more in the 40 pluses than catching a heap of the little 35s, 36s that you get um, over the summer periods. So yeah, I usually chase in the, uh, the bigger girls, hoping to get you know your 50 plus sort of fish this time. So sometimes you might be out there for hours and you get one or two fish and that's still a win. In most years, I'm out using sort of hard body lures uh, this time of the year. However, I did change that up a little bit and I'll chat through that a little a little bit later in the video. So uh, I started off the season, I think the first week in September, I caught um, some nice flathead on a zip bait uh, riggy and um, double clutch and my zip bait Raphael, which is what this flathead was caught on. So they're some of, you know, my go-to favorite sort of hard bodies. Some of the other Daiwa hard bodies were pretty popular this year as well. Also this time of year, I'm usually targeting more the middle regions of uh, the swan. I find that that's where they'll be in that spring period. Uh, so, you know, sort of anywhere from Maylands up to sort of past uh, Point Walter. This year I also caught a surprisingly large amount of flathead uh, upstream from the city as well. So usually I'm more targeting brim around that area, but I, I went out and specifically targeted flathead around that sort of, you know, East Perth, Maylands, up to Bayswater area and did quite well. The other thing, I guess, this season compared to last is I actually put the hard bodies away for most of the season and focused on other types of lures. Um, so earlier on in the season, I was using a lot of soft plastics and then I got my hands on a couple of nice different type of lures, which I'll cover a bit later. So earlier on in the season you can get away with using soft plastics a bit more as well because the water's a bit cold, the blowies aren't as thick and or they're a little bit more dormant. Having said that, if you're using sort of four inch plastics or three inch plastics, um, they can take a few bites and every now and then you're gonna get them chomped off. Um, if you avoid using S-Factor and other types of scent, you can usually get away with it in most areas. There'll be certain days where um, you've got absolutely no chance and you need to switch over um, and there are are other lures which I'll cover later which sort of led me to that. So here I think this was caught on a Z-Man uh, curly tail streaks which was probably my second most productive soft plastic. The other ones which I did quite well with were the Rapala Crush City uh, Imposter that turned out to be a really nice lure that I caught a heap of flathead uh, again when I was fishing upstream from the city. Uh, I also did pretty well just with some bargain bin lures, so those BioTuff um, rigglers in 4 inch or 100ml were really successful as well. And I think I picked them up for like $2 in a bargain bin, so uh, the Shimano BioTuff fish are actually pretty good as well. You just got to make sure you pair them with the right jig head, otherwise they don't swim straight. Whereas you use sort of you know, your Slim Swims or your, your Diesel Minnows, uh, they probably swim a little bit straighter. Um, but with the rigglers it doesn't matter, you can pretty much use any type of jig head and if a blowy comes along and takes a bite out of a tail, it still will work. Whereas if you get your tail bitten off on a fish style lure, you're pretty much done.
to where things changed up, I guess, was uh, in, I think, November or December, I started using the new lures, which I guess a lot of you, if you're watching these videos, will know about now, which is the, uh, the Buckaboos. So these were really successful, and I saw lots of people when I was out fishing, wading the flats and whatnot, tying on these lures, and they were just really effective. So I really liked, I guess, the uh, 3.5 and the 5 gram lure. I don't think color really matters too much, but those yellow Lovely types of colors mate, seem to work pretty huge. well. Really big. Walk backwards, mate. Walk backwards. My little nephew caught this massive flatty on a buckaboo. It was probably one of my best uh, memories of the flathead season for sure. He was absolutely stoked. So I really fish these like I would a soft plastic. Um, you can also whip them in really quick for a tailor and other, other types of species as well. But to be honest, I would just bounce them along the bottom the same way I would with any sort of like wriggler or other type of soft plastic. And they're completely blowy proof. The other thing is you can also put S-Factor on these as well where you, you're going to get little bits nipped off and they might take a little bit of the, the, the plastic um, off it here and there but you can get away with it and it definitely increases the bite. Now I guess we get to the time when I'm running through my favourite lure of the season. This is the uh, Vex Micro Meat. So these have only just come out and I was lucky enough to be able to use them for the sort of last half of the season. And it was definitely my most productive lure by far. Even this flatty was caught a few days ago. So they're still around if you can get your hands on them. I think they came out a few weeks ago now so um, give them a crack. For myself, I liked using the uh, 5 gram head. Uh, the 10 gram was also good if you wanted those extra long casts. <clears throat> Having said that, the 5 gram really casts well too. It's sort of almost like casting a sinker into the wind, and you can get huge long casts, similar to like the cast that you would get with, you know, a, a ZX40 or whatnot, where you can absolutely punch them a mile and cover a lot of ground. Same with the assist hooks, you can sort of pull them through weedy areas without having to worry about getting your, your treble snagged or your jig head caught on a rock. Um, obviously you're going to get snagged here and there, but like they, they really cut through the weed uh, very well. And the fish love them. I had some of my most productive sessions with these and I've got a few other videos on them uh, which you can find on my channel. The other thing I noticed with these is you use the smaller hook setup, so you can get all different types of hooks that you can um, put on, you know, even like worm hooks and whatnot. Um, I was using the, the two small assist hooks and uh, they were really good for uh, flounder, so. The flounder that I caught this season were all up close and next to and in between rocky structure, um, which I've been fishing a lot more in this year than years in the past as well. I think they're probably one of the most tastiest fish that you can catch in the Swan River. I got onto this absolute bloody carpet of one earlier in the season. This was when I was using the zip bait riggy and I was slowly reeling it in. And those bloody stupid sideways heads popped me up. Either way, the micro meats were definitely the lure of the season for me. I like the chartreuse colour and the double assist hook setup. Um, size 5 gram was the way to go. 
and I think it really paired well with my longer rods as well where I could get those huge long casts so my um, 8 foot 6 TD Hyper and then towards the end of the season I also got a hold of a uh, TD 0 7 foot 4 um, which was uh, 2 to 5 kilo as well which is not another bad rod for it. I'd say the 8 foot 6 was a probably a little bit better um, for the longer cast but the, the shorter 7 foot rod um, had better guides and better setup so I'll probably be using that moving forward. In relation to the line that I use for the season, I would say um, I use I guess three different line length strengths. So I start off with five pound sig long braid, which was fantastic for casting distance, but it just didn't last. I end up having to um, take it off my spool after probably even like about four or five weeks of using it, which was pretty disappointing. Having said that, I caught that really big mull away using the line, so it might have been pretty cooked after that. I then went to 8 pound Daiwa Expedition, which I've still got on my 2500 reel, which was fantastic. And I used to be pretty old school and use the Finn's 4 pound original every time. And I'm probably just a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to braid using that each time, which again, it's fantastic braid. Um, but the diameter of that is probably pretty similar to this 8 pound um, expedition. So it makes sense to bump up to the 8 pound expedition and have the same diameter um, of the braid. Um, so I think I'll probably be using that moving forward. On my other 3000 Abu Garcia Superior, I've got, I thought it was 10, it's actually 12 pound grinder braid. So I mainly use that for um, you know, chasing Taylor off the beach or the sort of semi heavier style estuary rod. Um, it worked pretty well, um, casts fantastic for when I'm going for Taylor and whatnot. For flathead, it was a, probably just a little bit too strong to distinguish between some of those blowy bites or when you're hooking up to a stick or snags and whatnot. So I'd probably stick with the 8 pound expedition moving forward. One of the other big key takeaways I took from this season is that um, somewhat because of family commitments and whatnot, I was fishing a lot of low tide periods through the summer. So rather than going down to my usual real flats areas um, in the sort of middle parts of the swan, I, I sort of picked out areas where there was going to be those severe drop-offs and areas like here where you can only really access on the low tide because you can't actually walk around it or it's too deep in sections to um, cast from or you're going to get snagged on you know these bushes and rocks in front of you when it is on the high tide. Um, I didn't get any huge monsters there, but like the number of fish that I was pulling from these sort of areas was was really good. So if you're fishing for a feed as opposed to, you know, um, going for your PB, this was definitely a really good way to go. So picking out those spots where you know there's going to be um, a severe drop off. So here, along this line of weed, it literally drops, you know, almost like uh, 1.5 meters straight from there, um, and it goes, you know. Um, some areas where it's deeper than others as you can see those boats aren't sitting too far from shore so it goes down pretty quickly so using you know the um, buckaboo soft plastic vibes or um, the micro meats we can drop them down to the bottom pretty quickly and hop them around just on that sort of ledge there was a, a really good way to catch fish when fishing these areas you just got to make sure you've got some decent footwear because um, walking over these rocks in some of these average shoes aren't the best. Overall it's been one of the most productive flathead seasons I've had in a long time and I've seen from everyone else really as well. Um, it's still quite hot so I'm probably going to be out there this week chasing them um, getting the final sort of few weeks of uh, a flathead feed. So thanks for watching if you've got any questions please hit me up in the comment section.